What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteNext.com. So today we're gonna to talk about a transformation. This is a transformation, you may not know who he is, or you might know exactly who he is. This is Riddick Roshan. He's a Bollywood Indian actor who made an incredible transformation. You look at the photos, you can see for yourself. Now this is supposed to have taken place over the course of less than two months. And I'm gonna tell you guys more in depth what I think about that and why. But I think a lot of times I take on this type of question because People out there know that I've actually worked with another Bollywood actor, the, the great Amir Khan, and we actually did some training together, as you can see here, and I had a chance to work with him, and it always amazes me the dedication to their craft that the Bollywood actors have. They make these types of transformations pretty often. They go up, they go down, and it, it obviously takes its toll on their body, but it takes a whole hell of a lot of hard work a lot of times to make this happen. So I feel like I'm qualified here to talk about it, though I haven't actually trained Riddick myself, right? But that being said, the first thing I want you to look at here is to really look at the pictures. Because when you do, you see a couple things. Number one, this before photo is not necessarily a small guy. That's not a small arm. It's an arm that's covered with some fat that looks different than this arm, but size-wise it's not actually that different. If you look here at the midsection, yeah, I can see a great looking six pack there. I actually can see a little bit of an outline over here but it's covered with more fat for sure. And even the delt, of course, yes, it looks a little bit more muscular up here, but it's not small here either, it's just covered with some fat. So what I see a lot of times is that our eyes will deceive us, and while there's an impressive transformation here, maybe it's most of all a, a recomp. Maybe it's a, a loss of body fat that's showing off a lot of the muscle that's already there. And we're gonna reveal in a second that there actually was a lot of muscle there for good reason. The second thing is, I think it's important to sort of talk about a flex versus an unflex state. A lot of times we know ourselves, if you flex versus not flexing, you can look a bit different in your photos. I think there's a little bit of that going on here too. The next thing I'm gonna talk about, just because of something that happened with Amir, I don't know if necessarily the time frame is 100% accurate. And I'm not saying that there's deception here or this intentional, the fact is that sometimes the time frame is not actually accurate. In the case of Amir, the transformation that you see here was said to have happened over five months. Meanwhile, when he and I sat down and talked about it, in his own very words here, he told me it actually took place over the course of a couple years. The act of building on and putting the muscle was actually much longer and taking away the fat was the five month transformation process. So I'm not saying that's happened here as well, but there's the possibility that it could have taken it a little bit longer. The next thing I'm gonna state, and I think the most important thing when you guys are out there looking at these types of things and how possible it is for you, I think you have to talk about the default state of the person making the transformation. And when we look at the default state here of Riddick, we can see that this guy's in shape. And he's been in shape a lot. He's actually known as the Greek god of Bollywood for a reason. He's got a hell of a body. He knows how to get in shape and he's been in great shape many times prior in his career. So when he goes to make the transformation, this is what he starts at, at the age of 45. He and I share almost the same age, but this is what he used to look like at one point in his career, in his earlier 30s. I will tell you this right now. If you have a base of training, if you have a good foundation, even if you've let it kind of go to crap, it's a hell of a lot easier to make any transformation going back in this direction if you once were here. If this never existed, going from this to something else is gonna be a lot harder. You have no frame of reference to get to. And I will say that even, it becomes even more imperative that as you get older, starting your transformation for the first time ever in your life, lifting weights for the first time ever if you're in your 40s or 50s, makes it a hell of a lot more challenging to get yourself in shape. It's always good to have a strong training base at some earlier point in your life. Even if you did it in your 20s and you stopped for 20 years, you're gonna be in a better situation than you were if you hadn't ever done anything at all. But, we talk about the training, and I think what's impressive about this transformation is that Riddick actually had some health issues. He had some significant back issues, some spinal uh, disc issues that made his training very difficult. So he was forced to take a different approach. And what you do is, when you take a different approach, a lot of times you'll be surprised by the different results that you see. Because I'm always telling people, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're gonna keep getting what you're getting. And anytime you change your training up, provided it's still smart training that you're switching to, you're gonna see a, a, a benefit from that almost every single time. So what Riddick did here is he was forced to stay, nece not necessarily focused on progressively overloading and relying on strength to create his gains. If this truly was a six week transformation, six to eight weeks, relying on progressive overload is gonna be very frustrating very quick. 
you're not going to be able to see a whole hell of a lot of strength gains that will lead to size gains in just this short period of time, especially if you have a long history of training and you're not a newbie. That's not what happened here. Instead, he focused on methods like this, like you're seeing, which is a slow motion rep. Zero momentum reps is what he called them. This forced him to become more aware of the muscles actually doing the work. This created a metabolic stimulus for, for muscle growth. And I've already talked about in many videos before, metabolic training is one of the three main ways that you can actually grow a muscle. So particularly if you haven't been doing it in the past, like he hadn't, and you've actually switched to it now, you do have the capacity to see some quick gains from doing it. Both for the sake of just changing to it and the, and the sake of it be, creates a lot more my muscle connection and forces the muscle to do more work than maybe it has before because you, you relied on a lot of momentum to do what you were doing. So it's not just there, but you can see it here in another example on the bench press. So he, empl he employed this across a lot of his training. But again, I think the most important thing is that you realize that there are benefits to be had here. You can't say that using light weights is always going to sacrifice your ability to put on muscle. Matter of fact, I go into great depth to talk about this in a lot of my other uh, areas, I talk about on Instagram a lot, why this is so important. And I talk about this concept of determining really whether there's an injury here or whether there's a lack of stability. Because when you go to bench press, you can see me doing the clip here, I always have a problem when I get some pain in my shoulder. But I have to ask myself whether it's actually the structure that's injured or the lack of stability when that structure moves that's causing the problem. And I will tell you in this case here, I can bench press like this very slowly and not feel pain in my shoulders. That tells me there's a stability problem, not necessarily a structural problem. Or if there is a structural problem, if I just provide some additional stability, slow it down and control the reps, that that structural problem is eased tr tremendously. That allows me to continue to lift and create gains where I thought there were none to be had. So what it all says here, guys, is that you need to sort of continue to look for other ways to vary your training and be aware of the fact that it's not always a bad thing. It's actually the thing that's going to probably spur you on to new results in the, in the, uh, more than anything else. So as I look back at this, I'll leave you with one final note. In this transformation, as I mentioned in the beginning, that there's a lot of body fat loss here that's creating that visual appeal that I think we're reacting to when we see this. If I had to create the most significant transformation in somebody, visually, especially an actor, visually, over the course of 30 days, and that's all you gave me, 100 times out of 100, I'm going to attack your nutrition. Not only because I know that nutrition is the thing that's impacted 24 hours a day and your training is only impacted maybe an hour a day, but more importantly because I know I can get the fastest results by going after your nutrition. If I can clean up your nutrition, I know I can create these losses of body fat that are going to make you visually look much, much better, much more quickly than if I had to rely on training methods that are going to elicit those types of gains in that short a period of time. So I implore you guys to look for opportunities to do the same. Riddick himself said that the number one thing that created this type of gains for him was that he was able to focus on eating good foods consistently. And guess how he did it? he actually switched to foods he enjoyed eating. He used to use methods where he tried to just cut down and eat things he didn't like and boiled chicken and things that were tasteless that he couldn't stick to. This time around he says, you know what, instead of getting as ripped and lean, I just want to be able to get leaner and still enjoy what I'm eating. And when he did, he found consistency. When you find consistency, this is where you can live. I've lived in this state for many years now, if you go back to my YouTube channel, not because I forced myself to, to eat things I hate, but because I eat the things that I enjoy and I'm able to stick with it because of that. So guys, I hope you found this breakdown uh, handy and helpful. The fact is, guys, sometimes we overreact to what we see, but when you look down beneath the surface here, there are a lot of things going on here, and, and especially in terms of the, 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 the type of training that he had to change to and maybe the unwillingness a lot of us have sometimes to change. I'm telling you, it probably holds the best results for you if you're willing to do it. In the meantime, guys, if you found the video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know what I'm going to cover, and I'll do my best to do that for you. If there are other guys that you want me to address, please let me know below. Maybe I can do that for you as well. If you haven't already done so, click subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss a video when we put one out. In the meantime, if you're looking for our program step-by-step -step and nutrition plans that do make this whole thing easy, you can find them over at athletenext.com. All right, guys, be back here again in just a few days. See you.